Hey, how's everyone doing? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be creating our very first Android app. It's going to be a simple tally counter, and this application is going to teach you some of the core functions and techniques that is used in app development for Android Studio. So let's get right into this project. So like I mentioned earlier, I'm thinking we're going to make a tally counter. So to start off, I'm just going to get rid of this Hello World text view. And then I believe we're going to need about three buttons a button to add a tally, a button to remove a tally, and then another button to reset one. But before we actually start placing in our three buttons, we're gonna actually need to throw in a layout. Because in general, you wanna place our views into view groups. Now, what are view groups and views? View groups are layouts or containers, and views are things like text and buttons. Now, Generally, you're gonna take your view group or your layouts and put things within them. So views go into view groups. So I'm gonna grab a table layout and place it out into our constraint layout. Now you can't see anything because there's nothing placed within our table layout. The next thing we're gonna do is grab our buttons and we're gonna place them within each row. And I'm thinking I want them to kind of be vertical, lying on top of each other. So we're gonna do this. And now we don't need this last table row, so I'm just gonna remove it. And now you're probably wondering why I just put a layout within another layout. Well, that's because whenever you're placing something on screen, it has to go within this main constraint layout and everything else will be placed within it. I use the table layout because I wanted to group these three buttons together and that's gonna help out later on if the user decides to rotate the phone, it'll kind of keep the layout that we create now uniform. The constraint layout is the main dude, and I'm just using this table layout to group our three buttons together. So now if we come over here, we'll see that we actually have an error for our table layout. It says that we have no constraints for this layout. So what are constraints? They're essentially what keep our views and view groups in the correct orientation on screen. To set our constraints, you could see these little bubbles on all the sides of this rectangle. These are what are used to set your constraints, but right now it's a little bit too big. If you come over here, you can see the layout width and height. What we want this to do is actually to wrap the content. So this will set the size to whatever these three buttons are. And now we can grab these buttons and drag them over to the right-hand side of the screen and drag this one over to the left-hand side of the screen. And you can see now our table layout is now centered left and right. We can take this bottom one, drag it down to here, and we can take this top one, and now it's centered on screen. So now that we've set a few constraints, we can actually come over to the attributes panel, and now we have this new constraint widget. What this does is it allows you to modify the constraint. We can either slide this slider to the left, and it will move our table layout over to the left. I like thinking of these almost as like springs, and this is kind of like increasing the spring constant over to the left. So we can drag it around on screen. So we set this back to 50. We also have the ability to set little margins here. So if I drag this all the way down to the bottom, I could take this, or I should use this one, and we can set 20. And now it'll be 20 DP from the bottom. DP is just the unit of measurement used within Android Studio. So now let's say you added a constraint and you no longer want it. All you have to do is come over to your constraint widget in the attributes panel. Hover over this little bubble and you'll see we get delete top constraint and that'll just remove it for you. So we come back over to our design. You no longer see this weird little spring anymore. So now the next thing we have to do is actually show the user which tally they're on. So we're gonna need a text view. The text view is simply used to display text in your app. Now I'm gonna add a few constraints. I wanna center this left and right and then I'm gonna add a constraint to the top. And now what I wanna do is take this table layout and I wanna add this constraint to this text view widget up here. Then I think we can make this layout look a little bit nicer by modifying the constraints a bit. So if we make this, let's say, let's see what, what does 120 look like? Those will look terrible. Okay, so this will work. So now if we come back over to our component tree, you'll see that we have a few errors here. So if we hover over this, you can see the error is hard-coded string. If we click our button, you'll see we get a few warnings here. That's because we're hard-coding in plus. But what Android Studio wants us to do is kind of make this a little bit more abstract. The way they do that is by using this string resource. So if we come over to our project panel in the resource folder, if we expand that, we could come down to values. And then you'll see a strings.xml. Open that up. And within this strings.xml file, this is where you have to define 
all the strings that you want to use. So if we want to make a new string, we type in string and we have to give it a name. So let's call this increase. So this will be for our increase button. And then all we're going to do is just put in a plus sign. I think that'll look a little bit nicer instead of saying plus. And then we'll make one for our decrease button. Close that tag. And then we'll put a little minus sign in here. Then we need one for our reset button. And then for this, I think we'll just use reset. We'll just use reset for that. And now we need a default value for our text view as well. So we'll go string, then we'll just call this text view default. Close this one. Then for the text view, I think it should have a default value of zero. So we could save this. And then if we come over to our activity, now all we have to do is reference the strings we just created in our strings.xml file. I find this to be easier actually coding it within the XML. So if we come over to this top right hand corner, we can click this button here and we can actually see the XML code. One way to find your widgets is by coming over to your design and just clicking on them. You'll see that Android Studio highlights the code that represents that widget. So for the text view, we come down to this text this is where the error is coming from. So within the quotes, all we have to do is type in at string to reference our string resource and we have to find the name. So this is our text view. So we want the default for that. We're going to come up to our button. So we want the plus one. Where is he? The plus button. So this is our plus. So we're going to reference the string resource again. String and then he is the increase one. This should be the decrease. And then this should be our reset. So now if we close this, come back, you'll see that all of our values have been changed and we no longer have those warnings anymore. So now we've correctly set up the strings for our views, but the text is looking a tad bit too small, I'm thinking, especially for the text view. You can hardly even read that. So if we click it, we can come back over to our attributes and we can actually increase the size of our text. Just got to scroll down a bit. Then you'll see we have text size. Right now it's 14 SP. Let's bump that up to, let's say 36. Yeah, so now we can actually read that. We can bump it up a little bit more, but I think I'm gonna leave it for now. Then the plus and minus, I think those can be increased as well. 14, bump that up to 18. And then what about the minus sign? Maybe we can bump that up to 18 too. Nice, all right, so that looks good. So there's one last thing I'd like to do for our layout, and that's actually adding a little bit of space between our reset and minus button. I think that looks a little funky. The way we do that is by adding a margin to that button. So we're going to head back over to the XML code. So if we take a look at the top right hand corner, we have these three buttons. I'm going to click the middle one so we can still look at our design here. Let me just flop over to that. We want to take a look at our reset button because we want to apply a margin to it. And the way we do that is by coming in between our button tags. You can come here, hit enter, and type in Android, followed by a colon, and then we want to add a margin, but we want it to be on the top. So if we scroll down, we actually see it's right here. So we double click that, add a margin to the top of our button, which will create a little bit of a space there. And I'm thinking, let's try, what does 30 dp look like? Okay, that's not terrible. We'll go with that. It's better than what it was before. There's one thing I remember when I was learning this, I always got this confused margin and padding margin references the space around your view and padding represents the space on the inside. We'll see we got margin top and that added space above here. But if I were to come down, if I did Android colon, if I put padding and let's say we put it at where's the top Yeah, padding top, if I gave that 30, You'll see on the inside, it added padding around our text here. So padding is on the inside of the view while margin is for the outside of the view. So now I'm just going to get rid of this because we don't need the padding. And then this looks pretty decent, I think. So there's one last thing we have to do, and then we can go over and start adding functionality to all of our buttons. What we have to do is add IDs to each of our views. So I'm going to come back over to this panel and I'm going to click our text view. And if you come over to the attributes panel, you'll see at the very top, we have an ID slot. I'm going to keep this ID as text view and then we're going to come down and we're going to actually change our button so we can differentiate between the three of them. This ID is just button. I'm going to change this to increase the following button. I'm going to change this one to decrease. And then the last one, I'm just going to give it an ID of reset.
All right, so that's it for our layout. All we have to do now is add some functionality. All right, so I'm gonna end the video here because it's starting to get a tad bit too long. I'm gonna be posting these videos together, so all you have to do is use the end screen to get to the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in a bit.